Good afternoon, my name is Holly Gellich and I'm here to talk to you today about the benefits of seed treatment as well as the benefits of seed testing diagnostics. So I'm going to talk about BioVision Seed Labs here for a few minutes. We started in 1996 in an Edmonton laboratory and expanded out into Grand Prairie as well as Winnipeg. Now those two laboratories are very different to our Edmonton Seed Testing Laboratory as they provide additional diagnostics of forage fescue and native testing, as well as grain quality analysis and varietal identification. BioVision Seed Labs is a CFIA accredited lab, which means Canadian Food Inspection Agency comes into our lab and accredits not only our facilities, but also our analysts. We are also ISO designated, as well as a member of the International Seed Testing Association. Today I will be talking about the benefits of seed treatment. In our laboratory, we routinely observe the benefits of seed treatment on a germination test. Also, in our pathology department, we routinely see improvements to the seed-borne pathogens. And lastly, I will be talking about soil-borne pathogen protection that seed treatments offer. In our accredited laboratory, we conduct hundreds of cereal seed germinations every single day. And in a germination test, we take the seeds and we plant them and grow them for seven days. At the end of that specific time frame, we open up the blotters and view the sample. And many of them have heavy disease pressure. And by that, I mean that, that there's heavy uh, sporulation and then production of hyphae and mycelium. It tends to be pink in color and overtakes the kernel itself and infects not only the shoot but also the roots. As a result of that, those are non-viable seeds and seedlings and will not grow in the field. On the other hand, if we take that exact same lot and we treat it, we will then see a reduction in that disease pathogen presenting itself and infecting the seed as well as the shoots and the roots. In our laboratory, a germination analysis can identify many in-crop conditions, one of those being frost damage. Now, frost damage can occur in many different areas across Western Canada in the fall, and that's one thing that we can observe in a germination test. A second thing that we can also observe that can happen in the field is when farmers apply a pre-harvest application of glyphosate. Now this is a procedure that is very common in Western Canada that farmers utilize to dry down the crop. But what it does is it impacts the seed quality and in specific the germination test. The second thing that we also observe is any post-harvest issues within a germination test. So an example of that would be mechanical damage in peas. We can also observe if there's any heat damage occurring in the bin, so it's starting to deteriorate, as well as we can observe if there's any problems with any drying of grain. The last thing we identify in a germination test is if there's any disease. In particular, we can evaluate if there's primary infection that is, will cause seedling mortality in the field. The fungal infection that happens within a germination test will do a number of things. First off, it will start to sporulate. And as the spores germinate, they grow into the embryo and then they grow out over the seed and will actually kill the seed. In a light fungal infection, what it will then do is then in a seedling that has germinated, it will then grow over the coleoptile and first true leaf and then grow over the roots. In some cases, a very aggressive form of fungal infection will then grow to the next seedling and kill the next seedling. Many diseases will impact the germination test. One of the most aggressive diseases in Western Canada is Fusarium graminearium, and that's a disease we test for almost daily on cereal samples. Now, if you have Fusarium graminearium at an infection rate of 5 to 10 percent, what you will observe in a germination test is you will have a germination result between that 80 to 85 percent. Now, if you have a moderate infection of Fusarium graminearium within the 10 to 20% range, you will see a germination reduction to the 70 to 85% mark. Now, if you have a very highly diseased lot of seed with Fusarium graminearium, you will see a germination reduction as high as 50%. So it's very important to be looking at seed treatment as an opportunity to reduce the disease that is already in the seed.
Disease diagnostics is very important for a producer to order when they're doing all their seed tests. What it will tell the producer is specifically what plant diseases impacted their crop in the prior year. Disease diagnostics then will also identify disease that you're putting into the soil. So as you plant your seed, you're also planting inoculum or those diseases into your soil. Thirdly, disease diagnostics will give you an indication if you're going to have seedling mortality. Every sample that we run through our disease diagnostics goes through a five-day incubation chamber period and at the end of the five days we identify the various pathogens and colonies that are growing from each individual kernel. Now if we take that exact same seed lot and then treat it and plate it and put it in the incubation chamber for another five days, what we will routinely observe is the seed treatment holds back the pathogens, either controlling them or suppressing their growth. So at the end of the day, the seed treatment offers early protection of the seed and the seedling as it's growing through the first stages of its life. Disease diagnostics can either be a single scan for one pathogen or it can be a fungal scan, which is a comprehensive suite of all the fungus that is growing from your seed. Now there are three different classifications of fungus in a fungal scan, one of them being pathogenic fungus. Now these are the ones that are most important because they will cause difficulties in a germination as well as the seed growth as it's coming through the ground. The second classification is storage fungus. Now these are funguses that are in the storage bin and can cause deterioration of the seed. And the third classification is non-pathogenic. Now these are just diseases that are present but are not going to cause stand establishment issues. So let's spend a couple minutes talking about the pathogenic fungus that seed treatments will control or suppress. The first one is Cochleobola sativus. Now this is a type of root rot, primarily in barley, but can also be observed in wheat. And it is a disease that is common in many different seed lots that we test and which seed treatment can control. The other types of diseases that are very important are Fusarium. Of the Fusarium species, Fusarium graminearum is the most paramount. It's the one we already talked about that impacts germination. So it's very important because it will impact your stand establishment. There are five other Fusarium species that are very common in Western Canada, which sea treatment also controls. A listing of those are Fusarium poa, Fusarium avenaceum, Fusarium calmorum, Fusarium sporotracheoides, and there's a couple of other ones that are not as common. But those ones, again, they tend to cause seedling blight, so it's very important to treat your seed if you observe those on a report of analysis of our fungal scan. Some of the other types of pathogenic types of fungus is Dreschlera, which is also called Pyronophora, and the last one is Septoria. And again, all those are controlled or suppressed by seed treatments. So it's very important that you know which pathogenic fungus is in your specific seed lot, and then you can target your seed treatment against those specific pathogens. Now the types of non-pathogenic fungus that are just present there are alternaria, and those numbers tend to be very large, anywhere from 40 to 80 percent, but they are non-pathogenic. They're not going to cause any damage to the seed as it's, as it's starting to sprout, as it's growing, and it's breaking through the, the soil to surface. Alternaria is typically a kernel staining type of disease, and that goes the same for Cladosporium. It is also a kernel staining disease. Now the last grouping of fungus is the storage molds, aspergillus as well as penicillium. And those can be controlled by seed treatment as well. And those are fungus that start growing in a bin as it's in storage. So it's very important to take your fungal scan that you do at your seed laboratory and look at your label on what, can, what specifically fungus it can control and then order your seed treatment from there. Seed testing is very important from a customer protection standpoint. All certified seeds sold, whether it is cereals, soya beans, canola, in the marketplace has to meet certain benchmarks. And those benchmarks are legislated in the Canada Seeds Act. There's also certain elements of seed testing that are for customer protection from a pest control act as well. 
In Alberta, certain testing needs to happen to ensure that no seed is planted that is infected with Fusarium graminearium. Seed testing is also important from a risk management perspective. A producer does not want to be planting a seed that has a 75% germination and is riddled with high pathogen presence. Lastly, seed testing in the form of a most comprehensive package of germination, cool stress testing, kernel weight, as well as full fungal suite is the most cost-effective management tool that you will have for your farm. The test to order from a seed laboratory will depend on the time of the year that you are doing your analysis. Right off the combine, we recommend a germination test, which will give you an indication of how the seedlings will perform under ideal growing conditions. The next recommended test is the fungal scan, which will give you your full disease sweep of all your seedborne pathogens. And the third test we recommend is the cool stress test. Now, this is very different from the germination test in the fact that we will test your seed under very cool growing conditions at 7 degrees Celsius. The next thing we recommend is to then test your seed again closer to seeding and this would be after the product has been cleaned and our recommendation is to conduct another germination test to ensure the seed hasn't deteriorated in the bin over the course of the winter and lastly a 1000 kernel weight test as well. And if you have any carryover seed our recommendations is to conduct a germination and a cool stress test. In summary, there are three main benefits of seed treatment. From our laboratory perspective, increase in germination is the biggest benefit of seed treatment when there is primary infection in the seed lot. The second benefit of seed treatment is that it suppresses seed-borne pathogens by reducing the aggression of the seedling pathogen. And lastly, it protects any seedlings from soil-borne pathogens that are in the soil or any of the crop residue.